So to pull these <clears throat> hubs off, you're gonna need to, especially the ones with the brakes, you're gonna need to remove these four bolts. We're holding that on. You can see the bolts there, where the bolt holes go on that front axle that does not have the brakes. But here on the brake axles, you just gotta pull that, pull those bolts off. And then um, this brake assembly will, will come off. So if you remember, we just on the on the other side, uh, I already took those off. But on this side, remember, we took those uh, those nuts off the back where this brake hub bolts. You can kind of see where the four bolts go on there, where it bolts to the spindle. And these were 11 16 nuts. They're not all going to be that way. Some of them are different. Um, but anyway, you just pull those four nuts off and then that's going to allow you to once you get <clears throat> pull this dust cap off and pull your cotter pin your castle nut out then you'll be able to uh, pull that that hub off that brake hub um, and then this hub is actually a lot simpler um, and smaller of course but this this one's got all the guts inside of it for electronic brakes so you also want to be sure and cut, cut your brake wire. That way, when you pull that off, it's not going to be dangling on the brake wire. So we'll just use a rubber mallet and we'll just gently tap this dust cap. And you're going you're gonna to hit it at an angle to where it's going to drive that out. Okay. There you go. Dust caps off. There you go. Got that one off. So inside there, you're going to see some old grease, probably, because these are horse trailers. They're not taken the best care of. And there's a castle nut in there. I'll show you. Let me get some different gloves on. I'll show you kind of what the what that's all about. All right. So your castle nut. This is what a castle nut looks like. This is from the other side, actually. A castle nut is called that because it kind of looks like the top of a tower of a castle. Your spindle has has these uh, threads on it. Your castle nut threads on there. It's also got a hole through the spindle that the cotter pin goes into. All right, you'll see more of that whenever we go to re actually put the new one on. But a lot of times, either people cut the cotter pin or fold it over. You know, it's got to be secure. So sometimes people fold it over different ways. Anyway, so we got that. I'll kind of tap that out. So all I did was straighten up that bent part of the cotter pin, and then I'm going to pull on the head of the cotter pin and pull that out. So this, those of you who know, don't know what a cotter pin is, that's what a cotter pin looks like. It's kind of like a hairpin, except for it's just meant to hold something in place like that. It's a good design. And a lot of times these are hand tight. You're probably going to want to use some channel locks just to loosen it up. Save your castle nut. Not all hub replacements come with new castle nuts, all right? So save your castle nut, because you might need it when you put your new hub on. Same way, if you notice, I don't know if you can see, if you notice what I'm saving is the castle nuts and that outside washer. There's a washer inside there. I don't know if you call it, you know, a, a, a race or I don't know what you call it. Anyway, it's just a washer that holds your bearing in place whenever that castle nut is on it. So that bearing can sit there and rotate essentially against that, uh, that washer. Um, everything's greased in there. You're gonna find some old grease, like I said, probably. So anyway, so that's off. So I wanna just save this outside, but this outside washer. So as you can see the threads on there, 
And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab this and slide this whole assembly off. You can see why I'm gonna replace it. It's missing some lugs. This one's missing a lot of lugs. That I've ran into is actually fairly common. Do not be alarmed when you go, oh my goodness, this is gonna be all sorts of damage to this trailer that I need to go and spend thousands of dollars on. You know, the axles are straight, the axles look good. Um, the damage is because these trailers were hauling horses all across the countryside. Gravel roads with potholes and everything else, that's where the damage comes. And also over tightening of these lugs. If you're a farmer and you got a big old heavy duty you know, impact gun, you may do damage to these and get them too tight and end up when you hit something just right, when you got a couple horses in here, you're breaking it, right? You're gonna bust some lugs. That's what's happening here. There's one completely missing. This one's actually broke off, okay? So we just pull this. I'm gonna put it in this box, you know, try it. It's generally a good idea. Try to keep from getting grease all over your floor, shop floor, garage floor, whatever you got. And don't be surprised when you find, like this one's got a big, uh, oh, uh, dirt dauber or mud dauber nest behind there. Don't be alarmed. The other side, actually, there was a, a uh, praying mantis uh, egg, egg casing on that side. So you find all sorts of cool little deals. It might be a good idea to have your kids check it out. They could bust open the the uh, dirt dauber nest and see what's in it and all that. So, so it could be an educational experience too. So there's that um, washer that I want. So I'm just gonna pull this out. Set that there. I'm gonna get, oh, get the foot. There we go. So I'm gonna take that washer because I want that. I want that washer. I want that castle nut. All right, that's what you look. That's what your spindle looks like. You got a bearing, an inside bearing that's going against this area, an outside bearing that's going against this area, and then your um, washer, castle nut, and then there's a little hole there. It's hard to see, but that's where it's in the threads, and that's where your cotter pin goes to hold your castle nut in place. It's just to keep your castle nut from backing off. Simple as that. Take you a towel, wipe that up, and then we'll pull this other one off, okay? We're gonna do the same process on this little one here. This is what, it's, it looks little, it's perfectly fine. It's that other break, uh, break um, whatever this thing's called, break hub isn't, beefier or anything than this little one. It just looks that way because it's got brakes inside there, electronic brakes. So let's straighten out the cotter pin. Got to tap it out a little bit. Pull that cotter pin out. There's your cotter pin. And if you use your channel locks, kind of be sure this is loose. Yeah, we're loose. Most of these are going to be hand tight. You know, you don't want to get you a big old cheater and cinch way down on these castle nuts anyway it's gonna it'll lock your it'll lock your hub up and cause damage so you, it's just finger tight when you go to replace it too i usually put a little bit of a of a cinch on it with some channel locks but there's castle nut save it and then pull our assembly off i'm gonna save that washer like i said i have I've had new hub assemblies that come with new washers, new castle nuts, new cotter pins. You, and then I've had some that come with no washer and no cotter pin and no castle nut. They'll usually come with a cotter pin or the wrong sized washer. So it's a good idea to save this. Um, that's what that's what you look like there. That's what the inside looks like. You got a seal, a bearing seal right there. And this bearing just sit in there and get grease on. So one thing I also am gonna do when I go back and replace these, um, here I'll show you if you can see it actually. 
So this, see that cotter pin, when that castle nut is on there, that cotter pin, there's just a little hole there that it goes through. All right. Do not let hub replacements, bearing replacements intimidate you. I'll put links. What you want to do is, it's the easiest way to go about it is to get some pre-greased hubs. I'm going back with all non-brake hubs. I'm not hauling horses in this thing. I don't need brakes, all right? It's not going to be heavy enough to where my truck or a truck or an SUV will need electronic brakes on this trailer. So, and it's one more thing to go wrong. So what I do is I take that off, take the brakes off, that way I can go back with a wiring harness that's just a four flat. Every vehicle will have it. And um, I'm gonna put those smaller non-brake hubs on all four wheels. Okay, so <clears throat> I've actually let this sit for a while while I've been doing other stuff and I'm going to install the bearing or the hubs today since they come in the mail. Um, I ordered them. This is a five lug hub kit. They are pre-greased. It's just a standard trailer hub. They're 3,500 pound um, hubs. They're pre-greased which means you don't have to pack the uh, bearings. You know, it's not hard to pack bearings, but it can be messy and tedious, so it's easier just to go ahead and spend a few extra bucks, get pre-greased bearings. So I've had this bag on here just to keep dust and whatever off of there um, while I work. So I'm going to go ahead and give it one last cleaning, a wipe down here. One last final wipe down. Kind of clean everything up. I'm going to open this bag. Now, there's another thing. I'll put a link to, in there for this specific set. This is one reason why I like this set. It is, it's like 10 bucks more, 20 bucks more, something like that, than a non pre grease set. But I'll show you, it comes with, you don't need this but comes with all your lug nuts of course um comes with your cotter pin we'll need that lug nuts like i said now, if you remember we saved that washer and castle nut well guess what this just happens to come with a washer and a castle nut right brand new washer brand new castle nut that's one of the things i do really like about this set and so Here's our hub. It's wrapped up to keep any dust out or moisture out, pre-greased. All, all I got to do is take this saran wrap off, slide this puppy on there, and put my castle nut on and my cotter pin or my washer castle nut cotter pin on, and I'll be good to go. One thing I do always add on all my trailers is this right here. All right, this will go right on the end. It's, uh, I think it's called a bearing protector, more commonly known as a bearing buddy. What this does is it's got a, it's got a spring in here, and instead of just putting this little dust cap on there and letting the grease do whatever grease does, this will actually, I'll put it in there, tap it in there with a rubber mallet, and then it's got a grease zerk right there that I can grease it up and it will come out. It will put positive pressure on there. This whole little inner thing will come, come out against that spring as it's putting pressure on there and packing it in there. And there's a weep hole right here that once it squirts out of that weep hole, then I know everything is full. All right. And then I can come back six months from now, top off the grease. I can come back a year from now, top off the grease. And it will always, this bearing will always be positive pressure and grease. Why is that critical? That will keep moisture from getting in there. If I go through water that's this deep, a puddle or a low water crossing or anything where water could get up in there, 
guess what? This thing is gonna keep push, it's got positive pressure on the grease, will keep all the water out, moisture out, dust out, everything will be out. And it will really make your wheel bearings just operate top notch for the, as long as you own it, I'm sure. All right, so let's get this thing on there. I'm gonna find the end of it. Oop, unwrap it. I always hold it like this, because if you were to hold it like this or like this, your bearings can fall out. If they do, you just put them back in. It's not the end of the world. So there, you can see our seal. It's gonna go against that. You can see our outside here, everything's packed, everything's ready to go. All I gotta do is put it on there, put it on there carefully. I usually put my thumbs in here in order to help that slide on where it needs to go. You gotta kinda wiggle it, there you go. You heard that little squirt. That's a good sign that everything is kind of sealed on where it's supposed to go. Put that washer on. Castle nut goes on there. Castle nut is hand tight. Okay. You don't want to seal it up. What you want is it to be hand tight like that, where there's no play, no play. When you wiggle this, there's not any kind of do, 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 do. There's no play in that. All right, now we'll find, I don't remember where our, all right, there it is. All right, so I'll tighten it down. I want to get it a little bit tighter, so I'm going to use these channel locks to just get a little bit tighter. Get my axis there, put my cotter pin through. All right, cotter pin is through there. That's going to keep your castle nut from coming undone. So then you want to bend that around. You want to bend this up. And then I want to bend it around these, uh, this castle nut, if that makes sense. All right, there's that one. Okay, it's bent around the castle nut. Now, technically, Traditionally, people would just put this goofy little dust cap on there and call it good, all right? Tap that on there and call that good. But like I explained to you, what I do is I'm gonna put this on there. You can see that just tap is right in there like that. All right, you can't push that in. You gotta hit that in with a hammer. So that's what we're gonna do. said you'll just hook your grease gun up there squirt grease in until that comes out slowly and then your grease will come out of this weep hole here once it starts coming out of that weep hole no more grease is needed there's going to be grease shoved in there in places that you'll never be able to get by yourself so that's why these things are so good and then it's got this little dust cap all right that this little rubber dust cap that We'll go, whoop, man, that's slick. <laughs> so, 
kind of there you go. And then you just shove that rubber dust cap on there, put it on there good, and you'll be good to go. Um, I'm not putting grease in right now. I've got a couple more to do. This is the exact same process. You see how simple that was. So I do it on on all four of the bearings. This works. This is how you would replace um, boat hubs and trailer hubs and anything. So um, anyway, this is pretty simple process. I know the first time you do it, it can be intimidating, but try not to let it intimidate you because it's, it's a relatively simple process and getting these hubs that are pre-greased makes life easier. Okay. And it's not, doesn't cost a whole lot more to do that. You always want to check this too. Notice that? See? That sucker, that's smooth, smooth, smooth. All right, it'll be a little tight at first. Once you get your wheel and tire on there, you start going down the road, it'll all loosen up. Your grease will get going good and warmed up. Everything's gonna be wonderful. So that is how you replace hubs.